Uh, yeah, I, I have loud <laughs> moments, but those are unnaturally loud moments. When you threw that gun down, I was like, ooh, what are you doing? What, because I had to break the merchandise? already accomplished what everybody was hoping to accomplish with it. I just happened to be Which was you do. winning. Yeah, I just happened to. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, I don't need to kill anybody. <laughs> yeah, there's no, nobody else was going to get shot, so there's no reason we need this gun any longer. I, I, I shouldn't have just tossed it and flipped it. I should have smashed it on the ground. <laughs> I'm like, this is over. <laughs> so she what wrote. I should have done. So she wrote. I'll have to remember that for next time I win. Mm, smash harder. <laughs> smash. This is delicious. I love it, other. Yeah, that type of thing. 100%. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was fun, dude. That was way more fun than I was imagining it was going to be, honestly. Like, oh, me too. I was just like looking at it being like, I'm too tired for this. <laughs> but once you get that competitive adrenaline flowing... I'm, I'm actually, I'm too tired to do this right now. This is, this is <laughs> different than, usually we come in, like the majority I think of our podcasts have been done where we come in like Midnight. right after a show. Yeah, well, <laughs> but, but not tired though, but like I'm, at least, well, maybe you've been tired. <laughs> but, but like, yeah, I'm usually ramped up from the show. I'm like, we just had a great show and like th th maybe there's still show tomorrow. We, sometimes we're doing it on Saturday nights or, or, or maybe we're just going home, but it's still just like kind of, Riding off the high of the show from that same day. Would you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? <laughs> introvert. Really? Yeah. But you get all jazzed when you go to a show. Because after a show, I'm like, Ugh. Well, yeah, after, but I'm still. I like to talk to people and I get along with people well, but I get like recharged being quiet and alone. Yeah, you know? me too. That's, yeah. Why, that's why I consider myself an introvert. Uh -oh. It's because of that. I'm, I've always, at least the last. If you're an introvert, I don't think I've ever met an extovert. <laughs> If, if you and I are introverts, <laughs> well, there I'll just are, lump myself in that same category. My understanding of it is there are truly extroverted people, and that means that they actually get energy from being around people. Like when they're right. by themselves, they're, they're, then they get like, uh, like, like, just kind of like they, their energy starts to dwindle, and they, and so, and then when they get around people, then, they, then that, that's what gives them the energy. Yeah. So that's the opposite of what you're saying right now is when you can, you do engage and I mean, you're very, you're very right. engaging when you're around people. But you're forcing it and no. then you're tired at the end. You're, not, not you're forcing engagement, you're forcing the energy level. Mm. So then you're like, oh, that took everything out of me when yes. you're done. Yeah. Yes. And, so. and when I, I used to be so introverted that I didn't even engage in like energy level. It was more like, I am going to be, I'm around people now and I'm going to hide while I'm around them. Like, <laughs> put on a hood in middle school, zip, cinch it up and sit at my desk and pretend that nobody could see me even though there's people everywhere. That's that, funny. That was, so I've, that's why I consider myself a converted introvert. A converted introvert. Because I'm not funny. like so introverted that I'm not going to like, I'm not going to just like sit in a corner and like, okay, as soon as it's You're an introvert, over. but you're also a glutton for punishment. So <laughs> if there's people there, you're there. I'm punishing myself. As an introvert. I mean, I'm not going to disagree with the punishment thing because, I mean, I've definitely done plenty of things. Like Running would be one of those things. That's yes. the first thing I think of. 100%. Like running 18 miles by myself For just me, because. For me, it's just snake bites. Snake bites. Yeah. Not Brian Parchek's old show, but like the teeth in my body <laughs> for some reason. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> this is making me tougher somehow. Also, I have an infection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of like that too. Not, not maybe not as, not as much. Mm. Not quite as much. I think. I mean, we had a podcast before where you, you were talking about like how very little money it would take for you to like cut off parts of your body. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That so would then, make and, me and feel I was like, no, about myself there's no I amount of money you can give me less of myself. Yeah. So the, we we are very different people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think uh, we should dive straight into the shallow end. What do you think? I mean, the name of this podcast could easily be changed to Diving Deep in the Shallow End, so there's no Probably reason. Probably should. The first name was dumb, and we ran with it for like three years because <laughs> we do dumb stuff. <laughs> and it makes sense just like uh, metaphorically to jump right in like that. Yes. Okay. You ready? <laughs> I have an icebreaker question. I just thought of it. All right. I think the way we should go down about this, though, is so the question would be. We didn't even like introduce ourselves. Should oh. we do that? I guess so. We haven't done this in a while. I know. Ex except for like two weeks ago. I'm Brian Cusco. I'm Garrett Hartle. We are your hosts of Searchables Reptiles Podcast. Stupidest name for a podcast ever. Invented by Garrett Hartle. Accepted by me. <laughs> 
I think I was just talking and you said that is the name. Right. So you invented it and I accepted it. I suppose. Mm -hmm. Anyways, let's dive in. Okay, so we're here at Clint's Reptile Grand Opening. This was an awesome weekend. Um, it was really cool. Last night we had a little bonfire and I was sitting next to Clint after all is said and done, right? Because you know when you host a big event, there's a ton to plan. There's a million things going on. And I think he's just preoccupied. So yesterday at dinner and then at the bonfire, he was able to just sit down and be like, ah. And what he told me, just like the happiest, most fulfilled look on his face after the ribbon cutting and all that. He's just like, he's like, I love this. These are my people. You know, he was like, I, I get very drained being around people. I'm very much an introvert. And he said, um, he was amazed the first time he went to Tinley, which is where I met him, was that first time he yeah, went. Yeah, me too. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense because he said, I had never really participated in the reptile community at all, but he'd been to a lot of like science conventions. That's why I laughed because we, we both met him at that same show at the same time. And you, when you were sitting down with him doing a little interview yesterday, you're like talking about how, is this really how this guy is? And you, you like watched his videos and you're like, is this really how is this, this guy is? This for real? And that, that time that I met him there, I had him on Triple B TV and had an interview and that was literally my thumbnail. <laughs> was like, <laughs> is this guy for real? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so... Um, yeah, he said that he'd been to a lot of science conventions and he never really felt like, he's like, okay, they're fun and, and I meet people that I like and I, I see stuff that interests me. And he goes, but then I go to the reptile shows and I'm like, and he's like, these are my people. And so he looked at me at this bonfire and there's, you know, a dozen of us around the fire or whatever. And he's like, this is awesome. These are my people. We ended up hanging out there till what, 1 a.m.? Something like that. Yeah, so good times. Anyway, that's the context for the uh, backbone of this episode. Oh, I thought you were about to like have a diving deep in the shallow end question. I do. I have the question. Okay, okay. So, the, the funny thing about the way that you did that too is like I, while you were talking, I was flashing back to the time that we had, you know, because every now and then we had guests on this podcast. Mm -hmm. a very, a very few, very few guests, but um, Clinton was one of them. Yeah, the first time right. that we came to this at place three years ago yeah. at, his, at his shop. He used his studio kind of. Um, and I remember pulling a clip from that podcast. It was like a five-minute clip that I pulled out and posted on Facebook because it was just just another thing of like, like how long it takes you to ask a question sometimes. And oh, it was yes. with Clint. And you're like, okay, well, let me ask you this. Like you were talking to Clint, let me, let me ask you this. And then I was like, I'm, right, I'm going to pull this clip and see how long it takes for the question to produce this. <laughs> it was five minutes. Jeez. And then there okay. was... <laughs> we're going we're gonna to dive in faster this time. Okay, ready? So that none of that was the question, but you can count it against me if you so desire. Here's the actual question, but I think we should answer it for each other. Oh. All right? Oh. So... Okay. I've been hanging with dogs this weekend. There's okay. a cute puppy. Jessica had a puppy. And I want a puppy. And my wife says no, and that makes me want it more. Okay. If you were a breed of dog, what breed would you be? But I think you should answer for me, and I should answer for you. <laughs> and then out of the people that were hanging here this weekend, if anything jumps out, like what kind of breed is that person, I want to know. Oh, I think... I'm not, you can, I'm, you not, can, I'm not really can, good at dog breeds. I don't know what's like. I, I can picture them in my head. You've got have a few basic ones that you know. No idea what to call them. Like I'm, like I'm just immediately thought of Dave and there's this dog, but I don't know what to call it. I can see the dog. It's an Irish wolfhound. That is what I was thinking in my brain, but I was thinking I'm wrong about that. <laughs> I was, that's literally the, the, the dog I was thinking, but is that? But I, my that's brain was Dave's. going, is that actually, though, the picture that I'm thinking? Is that actually what that's called? Is it yep. actually called an Irish that's wolfhound? It. We got phones. We can Google it if we need to. <laughs> Dave is an Irish wolfhound. Easy. Done. That's so weird. <laughs> it's not that weird. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that picture of him <laughs> during the battle where he's like roaring like a lion and charging down and you're like diving underneath his, his shot. He looked like an Irish wolfhound pouncing on its prey. <laughs> um, I, I think that Richard's a Scotty. A Scotty dog? <laughs> Maybe Richard Bilbo's a Scotty dog, huh? Oh... That's funny. I I think you are a pit bull. A pit bull? Yes, I think so. But not like the <laughs> just because of the like the way I won that not, nerf challenge. No, no, no. Not not like the bad rap of a pit bull, but like what an actual pit bull is. If you've ever had a pit bull, like my sister has a pit bull. Yeah, they're super friendly. They're always very positive. They're cuddly, you know. But at the same time, physically capable. Proud of that, you know what I mean. Want to get into that all the time. But then also super cool to like just. Lay back and lounge. They're the biggest lap dogs ever, right? So, but then if you want to go, go out and you know go do something crazy physical, 
they're I think, capable. I think you have to be a person that knows a pit bull for not what they're known for. Because you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, well, like I said, not their bad rap. There's a lot of misconceptions about pit bulls. Yeah. So I'm not saying it like that way, like you're going to go kill everybody all the time or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm saying like if you've actually ever been with a pit bull, I think you're a pit bull. Your face even kind of looks... <laughs> Pitbull. It's ass. because of all the extra sugar I've had this week. <laughs> it might be that famous Cusco nose. <laughs> that's that's what I think. You you free to to uh, change that up if you think you're a different dog breed. No, I, I mean, in the context or in the explanation and the description of a pit bull you gave, I, I could I could see that because I, I am pretty chill. There's times I'm just sitting, you know, everybody's going around and I'm happy just kind of sitting and like watch it all happen, you know, and I don't need to like jump in and I'm just like I'm just like yeah, this is cool. Everybody's doing their thing and. It's getting excited, and I'm like, this is great. I'm sitting there just kind of smiling, like a little happy, tiny wag or whatever. A little, oh, happy place. So I, I just thought of something. I don't know why my brain went to this place. In the world of what dog breed are you, Clint Laidlaw would be an African gray parrot. <laughs> well, hi there. <laughs> dog? <laughs> That's as close as he can get. It's always a little bit different, you know, just kind of hanging out at the top. To little quips every now and then. You know his little uh, yeah, jokes. Yeah, I know, but I don't know if you're allowed to. Remember when Dave's like, that's it, I'm quitting YouTube. And he's like, probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But that would be if we were just using birds as a as the selection. Yeah, I don't think you can have a dog category. Look, you just they... asked if this guy was for real. It's like, he is for real, but he's not like anybody else. He's more of a bird. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm not, gonna, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to... I'm not going to disagree with your premise selection or anything really i'm not disagreeing with anything other than the fact that that i'm cheating that you're cheating which is usual i guess yeah and to be expected par for the course yeah <laughs> uh we, we all saw what happens when i don't cheat this weekend so like i did cheat a little bit by picking what's the best pet animal in clint's reptiles room and i picked clint yeah. That was a little bit of a cheat, and it barely got me into the top four to be a team captain. Yeah. And then I didn't cheat at all during the nerf round, and I lost. Did you not cheat at all? Uh-uh. Mm. Well, you, thought I, it, you talked about cheating. I, yeah, I had a plan to cheat, and then he like changed the rules on me. I'm like, Clint, if I don't know the rules, I can't cheat. You've got to give me the rules so that I know what everyone else is going to do. That's another thing that I, that I liked about it. Not, not knowing, because the whole time I wanted to know, like, the details of what we're going right, to do. so you can have a plan, a yeah. strategy. Uh, of just for anything, like just for the entire weekend. Like right. not even for a strategy of plan, just to, just to know. Just like my brain is like, well, what's, what are we going to do? Like what's the plan? Yeah. You know, if I'm part of something, I like to know what the plan is. Sure. Um, so, but it was fun. It, it was, it, I think that that led to it being even more fun than I was expecting it to be because I didn't know what to expect which is even what I said when I had the little moment to introduce myself to the audience live at the thing. I was like, I have no idea what's going to happen here. But yeah. We're going to find out with you guys. And maybe the fact that I came out on top added to the fun a little bit. I don't know. It's not that I'm super competitive and like to win at everything all the time. That's, mm. not, that's not me at all. Yeah, man. right. <laughs> Pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what do you think I would be? I, I don't see this is where it's tough because don't I don't know breeds. enough don't know enough dog breeds and the other problem is that the moment you said it and still as you've been talking and I, I just keep coming back to Chihuahua and that <laughs> <laughs> a Chihuahua <laughs> is it because it's the only other breed you know or do I actually no. somehow remind you of a Chihuahua no there's a, well <laughs> the funny thing is I, I actually don't really consider a Chihuahua to be a dog <laughs> <laughs> so you're cheating as well might as well be an African Grey and I don't know. I don't know if it's just like this. Well, it's not like you're super yappy, but you definitely yap a lot. Mm. Um, that is frustrating. <laughs> frustrating. I mean, it's not, I mean, not like a small guy, but like there's a little bit of that small guy energy, like you, like you, you know, making you up for my super dwarves. Making up for your super dwarves type mm. of thing. Yeah, there's a bit of a bit of that. I think. <laughs> I do know way more dog breeds than just Chihuahua. I mean, there's, there's Corgi. Let's just see how many dog breeds I do know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to do a whole episode. There's like 3,000 dog breeds. But I don't know hardly any of them. That's oh, my point. Okay. I don't know why I don't know. Well, there's like different types Chihuahua, of bulldogs. Chihuahua, huh? There's, uh, Maybe I'm too stuck on the big apple eyes and the Mexican origin. I, like, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, like, maybe not one of the really ugly Chihuahuas. But like, <laughs> cause some of them are just ugly, oh, in my yes. opinion. No, some of them are, yeah, they like... Like, like the, the apple head ones with the tiny little nose, and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not not that one. Like the ones that have like hair, yeah, and, and <laughs> a little bit more normal, somewhat more like an actual dog. Yeah, I was thinking more, more, more like of those. a backyard chihuahua, not a purebred chihuahua. Yeah, and maybe it's also because like the several times that physically you've tried to attack me, I was just gonna like, 
<laughs> just like I would do. You with were a... completely oiled up. It was totally unfair. <laughs> unfair just, advantage. And that, 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 even that match reminds me of like if a chihuahua came in a pit bull and I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> out of here. There you go. So we got it. Chihuahua, the chihuahua and the pit bull. <laughs> Could be the name of a new podcast. <laughs> the chihuahua and the pit bull with a special guest host. Our special guest, the African Grey. Oh. Well, hi there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fun. <laughs> I want to think. I, I want to think of somebody else. Who else that we were hanging with this weekend? Oh, yeah, yeah. A there's good plenty more breed. people. Um, ooh, um, Tibetan spaniel, Catalia. A Tibetan spaniel? Yeah, is that okay? I don't think that's a thing. It is a thing. Tibetan spaniel. Googling it. Yeah, let's go. I mean, we Tibetan got a phone sitting here. Spaniel. Everybody else can. Uh, I know there's a Tibetan mastiff. Tibetan spaniel. Hmm. Bear with us, folks. Yeah, I want to hear what you guys think. Did you know that there's a Facebook group? Oh wow, that is funny. It's a thing. It looks like a Tibetan mastiff, but tiny, <laughs> with a with a chihuahua face. And I've, I've hung out, we had one that we hung out with a lot. Our bass player's girlfriend had one for a long time named Charlie. Yeah. And he kind of cruised around. It, it kind of reminds me of like, okay, so he's like kind of sweet, but like there's Happy, like this. kind of cool, yeah, always kinda, there. Yeah, always there. And, yep. um, I like it. But like with an underlying bite, like if you got, if you went, if you like, because every now and then Dave, you know, will we'll take a, just a hair too far and she's like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Does she really? I, I mean, not. I haven't. It's, it's, it's in a sweet way and it's Dave, so it's like expected. It's like every. Right, yeah, you every, should do that to Dave. Yeah. Right. Um, got to put those Irish wolfhounds in their place every now and then. <laughs> so anyway, we have a Facebook group for this uh, searchable as reptiles thing. I, I'd love to hear what you guys think of, like, who's your favorite? Just even say anybody that. You know, like as a YouTuber or someone that was well known, reptile breeder or whatever, and what breed would they be based on? Yeah, or even correct our yeah. interpretations of each other. You Is know, there whatever. better than a pit bull or a chihuahua for us? Yeah. Or a Scotty dog for Richard Bilbo, <laughs> <laughs> who's sitting in the room right now? Um, ooh, uh, oh, uh, Adam Wickens. I know he wasn't there, but okay. he's the first person I think of as somebody I could compare with, like a dog breed. I'm thinking, um, uh, English English bulldog is that was that the one that was um, yeah that's pretty cool that's like the traditional bulldog no 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 sorry the not American not, no, bulldog no, is no, the no, more no. athletic one right no but that's not the one thing I, it's it's the type it was like the Spuds McKenzie dog I don't know who Spuds McKenzie is you don't know who Spuds McKenzie is no what are you talking about I don't understand pop culture references oh really not uh, not often how do you not know what 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 is it Staffordshire Terrier Staffordshire Terrier Oh, that's a pit bull. <laughs> yeah, staff, a but staffy it's not, is uh, it's like a type of pit bull. No, nah, I'm going to go thing. heavy on the Google here. I, I just I thought the English bulldog wasn't far off, honestly. Hmm. No, because English bulldogs are like that's like the one from Tom and Jerry, like the gray dog. Yeah, no, I know, I know the, I know Staffordshire bull terrier. No, I don't. That's not what Spuds McKenzie was. Oh, a bull terrier bull is what you're no, thinking. No, 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 no. This is not Spuds McKenzie. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but this this is not Spuds McKenzie. I'll just look up. Did you look Spuds up? Spuds McKenzie was the uh, he was the the guy the the guy the dog um, for um, Budweiser for a long time for Bud Light back in the '80s was like their. their I didn't drink much beer. I neither did I, but I still knew who Spuds. I didn't drink. Is it this dog? Yeah, that's it. That's a bull terrier. Yeah. So yes. there you go. Yeah. Not 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 Staffordshire. Not Staffordshire though. That, yeah, that one. Bull terrier. Yeah. Just kind of like the this one right here looks like him. That's what I'm saying. That's a, yeah, face on, not from the side, but yeah, like hold face. On. This one looks like Adam. Most people, are, a lot of people are listening to this podcast, not watching on YouTube. But yeah, if yeah. you do happen to be on YouTube, I guess you get to see. There you go. Well, or you just Google. You can Google along with us, <laughs> yep, unless you're driving. In which case, yep, or you don't just look do at that. A bull terrier looking at straight at you. That's a good one. I like that. All right. Well, okay, so let's... Are we going to do this the whole podcast? Just... No, I don't know. I, I, think, I, I think we can be done. What do you want to talk about? No. But if I think of another one, I'm dropping it. Okay. I, I like that there... Oh, so, so the one reason I shut down English Bulldog is because that would be Gavin. From Balls, Balls to You. Because he's English. Because he's English and, and he's yeah, also... He's pretty, I mean, yeah, he's like stacked. Got that. And like 
super mellow though too. Yeah. Like yeah. really chill guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I like it. Anyway, um <laughs> I mean we could talk ooh. Do you see Godzilla in the Wait, carpet? Russ Russ would be a uh Jack Russell Terrier. Mm. That guy's like oh, wicked yeah, yeah. smart, lots of energy, you know what I mean? It's right there. I'm with Godzilla you. in the carpet. What you could get in way in the deep end now. No. I you don't see Godzilla on the carpet? Come on, dude. No. Where's Godzilla? I mean, there's four of them and he's small, but he's there. No. You don't see Godzilla? No. Oh, the blue. Yes. That is Godzilla. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay. <laughs> We're doing great at this audio podcast. We sound more like we're talking way late at night and during this podcast, and it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. That is weird. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I don't anyway. know if we, we... I think we've talked about doing the podcast in the morning, but we've never actually done it. Yeah. We've been like, well, maybe we, you know, if we need to, we'll do like a coffee morning podcast if the time allows. Yeah. And this time it was more like, no, we potentially have time to do it not that time when now we're doing it here. So I have a question for you. Good. This is not a reptile show. There's no business to be done here, right? Um, there's no, I mean, other than you could grab some content, right? Obviously. Yeah. But uh, why did you come? What was your main reason for coming here? Because I know that you were back and forth a little bit. Yeah. Right? I'm, not I've that been you back. never wanted to, but I remember you telling me just you were super busy and strapped and everything else. So. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always kind of like that these days as far as like kind of picking and choosing when I'm going to leave. It's just tough to be away from the home right now. Oh, I feel you there. Yeah, so that, that's the reason that I'm ever back and forth on any of these. Like if, I, if, if time and reality weren't a thing, <laughs> and just like the reality of the situation, I guess, of like age of kids and all that type of stuff, like I'd be, I'd be more like no, no back and forth. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here. And if I could just bring everybody, like bring Hillary like all the time and stuff, then I, that wouldn't be a question. To That's the reason, though, that, that I'm back I and forth. Trying to get Ashley and the kids. I'm like, you should come to everything all the time. It would right. be so fun. Right, so the, the, which that's what I think. Right, and Ashley <laughs> says, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's what Hillary says. Mm -hmm. So They're cats. Yeah, but she was, you know, the, she actually was open to coming to Utah. She like, thought it would be fun to do a Utah trip, but then it would be more of a driving thing, and the yeah. baby is really not good in the car right now. Mm -hmm. So... There's that whole factor. Um, so that's why you wouldn't have come. Why, right, right. Why? Well, let me ask it this way. Five-minute question. <laughs> what did you hope was going to happen? And then, wh or what was your, like, envision of why you came? Why did you decide to come before knowing everything? And then now, the weekend having been completed, what was the best part for you? Well, I mean, you... Th you not to exclude anybody else, but this is just the truth. This is the facts. You, Dave, and Clint are like some of my best friends in this in this world. So when kind of like when when I know that you guys, you three are getting together, like if I'm not gonna be there, that's like that's a real bummer in my brain. Like like then I'm like, dude, I don't think there's been one of those yet. Whereas the three of you are there and I'm not. Yeah, it is weird how we keep ending up that way. You know, like yeah, I mean, specifically, I'm thinking of like like CNB's grand opening. It was yeah. specifically the four well, of that, us. That was that was right, like my thing. Like, hey, we need to get search of those reptiles, and I was like, wait, I can get you some more YouTubers for coverage. So we need Dave and Clint, who are both bigger than either you or I, yeah, in channel size and outreach and everything. So, right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, and then like I said, I don't think there's. I was I was thinking I don't know unless you guys did some kind of secret gathering without me, the three of you. I don't think there has been one of those. So I don't think so. That was a big factor as well, where I was like, as much as there was, you know, because with Tinley happening and then the Sacramento show and then knowing that I was going to be in the Bay, and like, I was away like every single, you know, I was away this month more than I was home. Yeah, So likewise. That was a big factor into even questioning it. But yeah, the three of you being there and the thought of you three doing this and then the rest of the time I saw it when it was it's first a FOMO yeah the major <laughs> major FOMO major FOMO but also just knowing how much fun that we have when we're together and that it's tied into everything that we're doing like, you know reptile stuff and like YouTube stuff and it's just like that's what we do it's like why would I I sometimes I blow myself away like how selfish am I that I was thinking about not coming 
you know? Mm. Like, that, that seems like that would have been super selfish. It, but at the same time, it also feels very selfish to come because of... Yeah, the, right. Well, it's like, kind of like, for me, this trip is like self-care. <laughs> to be yeah. perfectly honest, right? Yeah. So, well, yeah. it was for me until that huge gallop of sugar at the bottom of that coffee, and I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to die now. <laughs> yeah, uh, so just, we'll, just went to a country, uh, first time I ever went to a uh, cracker, barrel. cracker Barrel, and it was really, really good, but I, I also probably not really the best for my health. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think they claim to be healthy. <laughs> it's more like soul food. Yeah, yeah. Soul food breakfast. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. So what was the best part then having come? You, you came just because you know that we were going to be here. Yeah, because you guys are going to be here. It'd be fine. I mean, the grand opening of the Reptile Room, that would be... And Clint also, I mean... And this is why, why I say sometimes it feels selfish. It's like Clint's asking me to come, and I'm, I'm kind of like being like... Instead of being like, oh, 100% I'll be there, I'm like, I'm not sure if I can make it or not. You know, that, feels, that feels selfish in hindsight. Like, I'm thinking back on those little back and forths of him asking me to come and me saying, like, I'm not sure if I can or not. That feels selfish. Like, in the, I look back at that and I kind of like, I'm like, oh, man, that's, that's gross that I even said that. Um, so, I show you so anyway, there, there's that. What, what was the best part? <laughs> Winning the freaking championship, dude. Yeah. Yeah, man. That was, I mean, if we're going to talk about, like, highs, for me, personally, I was, like, I've, I don't know that I've ever stood in front of a crowd like that feeling, like, Usually the idea, like even when, the moment when I was standing there after I won, there was that moment to just kind of be like a little bit like, oh, like I should be humble here. But then sometimes I was like, oh, no, I'm putting my hands in the air. I won. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Everybody cheer. I, I have video. You were not humble. <laughs> no, I wasn't. There was it for a second in my brain that was like, just you know, be quiet and like bow your head. And I was like, nah, <laughs> not this time. <laughs> That's funny. That was uh, that was an epic Nerf gun battle, and you know it seems silly. Like, okay, we're all gonna get together as grown men and have a Nerf battle, but it was pretty fun. It was a lot of girls too. <laughs> wow, well, okay, grown humans having a Nerf battle. The girls kicked butt. Did your second. microphone fall off? Oh, it better not. <laughs> yep. How long has it been like that? I don't know. <laughs> I'm naturally loud. <laughs> I usually speak through my belly button anyway. All right. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you found that because I want to do this. So I, I told Clint I might not be able to go because I had something else that I was trying to move off that weekend that I couldn't. And when I said that, he uploaded this video to, to YouTube. So I'll, I'll play it here next to my, my newly placed microphone. Hopefully you guys, well, if you didn't hear me for the last five minutes, I didn't say anything too important. Here. You guys... Your Arnold says he might not come to the grand opening. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> He's putting hand sanitizer on his face. <laughs> oh, it burns. <laughs> He's putting fake tear in. He's like, oh, it burns. <laughs> Why won't he come? Why? He told me. He Why does it, it only have one like and you're the only like? I, I think he I think he uploaded it to YouTube just so he could send me the video. Oh I gotcha. And then never did it, but it was it was called Ugly Crying. It was so funny. <laughs> anyway, he, I think he was actually real crying after he put hand sanitizer in, in his, his eyes. tear ducts. Yeah, he's like, oh that burns. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. But, yeah. So I mean, yeah, it was I mean, he's such a nice guy, and he's such a joy to be around. He's so funny, and I just really like being around him. Um, and I feel like he also makes me a better person. Those are the people I like to, like to hang around, you know? Yeah. Um, so, and, and it was such a beautiful moment, you know? Like, last night, right before they cut the ribbon, they were... The family, you could, and yeah, they were the, crying. The, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. You, know, you tell, like, how much he truly appreciated what the moment and what was happening and, and, and he's because he's also so poised a lot of the time you know he's, he's a very poised individual sure it was really cool to see like that that posture break for a moment break through a little bit yeah it the even uh the mission of clint's reptile room is very different from most reptile you know like because a lot of us have snakes like our snakes we enjoy buying expensive snakes, so we have to then sell some of them to get money to buy more, right? That always goes right back into the hobby. But for Clint, you know, he's kind of like a 
an end all. It's like a one way door. Reptiles come in, they live there forever, they get loved by tons of people. And it, he literally set the place up. There's all kinds of furnishings and touches of him, right? But it, it feels like you're walking into his living room and enjoying his pets, whether it's Gus Gus or any of the others. And people can come in and basically help themselves to his collection. I'm amazed how much he just freely lets anybody hold whatever they want. I mean, Richard Bilbo over here is getting chewed on by a, an uh, emerald uh, tree boa this weekend. You know, they're like, that one's really mean, but go for it. <laughs> so, but I mean, you know, honestly, they... Um, you know, his, his mission is cool. He just wants to, like, hang with people. He gets so much from the animals, you can tell, legitimately. And he just wants to share that. Like, this is wonderful. you got to try this, you know. So, yeah, it's a cool mission. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, I came, I think, you know, for similar reasons. Like I said, there's not really any business to be done here or, or anything like that. <clears throat> but I've been traveling so much and uh same thing i would love to you know like we were talking at breakfast or whatever at the cracker barrel you're like man i'm looking forward to getting home to see my kids and I, i'm thinking ah, you know i get to get home but i know i'm gonna put out a bunch of fires at the shop and you know just try to catch up with everything and but i will get to see them this weekend i have a weekend where i'm not traveling so so that'll be good so i feel the same way but at the same time because, uh, you know, especially if you guys listened to the last episode, there's been a lot of, like, upheaval, I guess, at Reach Out Reptiles this year in general. So it's been, it's just been a lot of work and pressure and, you know, all that kind of stuff where I'm, like, tested. I, I've definitely gotten, like, right to that line, that breaking point in life several times this year. Um, and it's been nasty to see people that, you know, like I said, like considered friends or whatever, kind of kick me while I'm down or whatever. So this weekend I knew that people that, you know, like if I stopped making a YouTube channel tomorrow or I didn't have anything to offer the reptile industry anymore or anything like that, I know that, you know, certain people would still remain my friends and most of them were here this weekend. Mm. So that's why I say for me, it was like a, definitely a selfish thing, um, and, and to your point, you know, I, I was talking with, um, I'll just say a friend of mine, uh, to be vague about this, but you do become like the people that you hang around, right? And so a lot of people, especially if you have low ambition, you just find people that are an easy fit for where you're at right now. And you don't grow that way. You, you can actually like stunt your growth as a human being that way. Um, not physically, but like mentally, right, right. maturity and, yeah. and everything. Hanging out with somebody like uh, Clint or really everybody that was at, at this grand opening, all the people he invited were, were great people and aspirational to be like in their different ways, even Dave. Yeah, <laughs> totally. You know, where it's like, man, you know, he's, he's got a lot of cool qualities. You have a lot of cool qualities. Clint, like man, if I could be more like Clint, like 10% more like Clint in my life or see the things that he's really good at and learn how he is like that and, and apply that in my life, I would grow tremendously as a person. So yeah, for me, it was selfish in that regard where it's like, you know, I need this for me right now. So I, I kind of chose the one trip where it's like, I'm just going to do this for me. And that was why I pushed you to go, you know, because I think at the time that we talked, this was a while ago, I, th I think hopefully you're over it a little bit by now, but you were like, man, I don't know, bank account says zero <laughs> or whatever yeah. when we talked. And uh, hopefully I'm not oversharing there. But I was like, look, I'll get an Airbnb. I'll get the rental car. You got to be there selfishly for me too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I know, I mean, I might have won the Nerf battle if you we weren't here, but <laughs> I uh, kicked your butt in trivia, so I'm just going to stand on that. That's, if, that's true. Yeah. yeah. If the Nerf battle was advantageous for, you know, gives you advantages for the trivia, and that was the big thing, I think the yellow team would have crushed yeah, you. Yeah, I would agree. I'm going to so, go ahead and disagree. Uh, but but I, that's not the way it went. <laughs> no, it's not. But, you know, so... so um, basically the weekend broke down into like three things, right? For people who weren't there, we had this great race where we ran around <laughs> Springville, Utah, like all over the place with no cell service, trying to find ship your reptile boxes. One was like in a playground at a park. 
Uh, one was inside of an art museum, and we had like GPS coordinates to go by, which I've never done any like geocaching. That, at least not that I was in charge of. I'd gone with people, but yeah. that so, was interesting. So there were GPS coordinates, and there would be a handful of numbers missing from the coordinates, and you'd have three trivia questions, and the answer to those, every one of those questions were numbers. Or numerical, and it was, yeah. yeah, they're you numerical. Plug them in. You plug them into the GPS and coordinates. If you're wrong, if you're, you're wrong, off by four blocks or whatever. Well, it depends if you got it off in the like the hundreds place, which is some of them where you'd be out by mile, like yeah, tens to hundreds of miles. So, yes, which that would be make it obvious if you're wrong. If you know that you looked at the coordinates, like oh, which you were on Dave's team, like you guys had the advantage because he won the first. Nerf gun battle. Shooting himself in the face. Shooting, yeah, he was the best at shooting himself in the face, yeah. <laughs> that was an interesting twist. Um, and so you guys had the advantage the whole time we were driving, right, Richard? Uh, Richard was on my team. We were driving, we're like, oh man, there goes Dave. We were like, should we just skip the clue and follow Dave? You know, <laughs> Which you could have. Yeah, but. Um, but you had to like, you. But I think they would have disqualified. Well, they had us. people at, at each of the boxes. Yes, right. They would have, that needed to say you were there, you were there, you know, so. So, yeah, so they broke into that. That was, uh, like kind of a big thing and then they teamed us all there was a lot of time for hanging his vip experience i thought was really cool people from all over the country and stuff coming down um so but besides the hangout times that they had then they went into like a big trivia thing which was like what's the show jeopardy yes jeopardy yeah we have to Where answer like, i'll take this question. category for 800 right yeah, so we did a Jeopardy thing, and then we did... Which Clint actually kind of has an Alex battles. Trebek, like... Yeah, he does. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it worked out pretty well. It was pretty funny. But it was cool to see, you know, getting to know all these other YouTubers a little bit better, like their strengths and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, like Dan the Turtle Man, do not question his knowledge of mitochondrial DNA. Man, he dude, his answer was like... And he it wasn't like he was like... There was no stumbling. It, it sounded like a... If you hit fast forward on like, you know, you search something on Google Wikipedia. and uh, Wikipedia and he's <laughs> yeah. just like, I was like, what, what is he saying? Why do you know this? You keep turtles. <laughs> this is worthless information. It was incredible. I was, he, he, he was like going to keep going. The clip was like, no, you, you win, you win, you win. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then um, the uh, uh, Russ Wilson from, is it Aquare Pets? Um, Aqua Pets? Yes, something very similar to that. Oh, I'm sorry, Russ. <laughs> Remember, you guys can go watch him. He's on like every Clint's Reptiles video that has to do with invertebrates. But um, <coughs> any question that had to do with the invertebrate stuff or like the weird uh, phylogenies and, and classifications of things. Yeah, he was on He it. was on those questions big time. Um, so that was pretty cool. And then, uh, of course, there was... Um, um, oh, Nancy, and what's her husband's name? From the Paleo channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I knew it last night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, this is more like late night for us in the morning. We're apparently night owls. Yeah. Not morning people. Dang it. Oh, my gosh, dude. <laughs> yeah, pretty funny. I, Anyways, those guys were uh, super on point with the, like, it, it was funny. They, like, uh, one of the answers, for example, is Velociraptor, right? And he's like, Velociraptor mongoliensis. And I was like... <laughs> The whole set of species name specifically and all that kind of stuff. Unnecessary, but awesome that you know that it's that specific species of velociraptor, you know, when the genus would have been fine. You know, the problem is that at these events, I've met too many uh, ginger bald guys with big beards. <laughs> I'm, I'm, real, I'm trying to dredge up his name, and, and I'm thinking and now all of a sudden, like, like Richard's coming into my head, and like all, all kinds of people. The golden retrievers of the reptile industry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Anyways, those guys are awesome. It was yeah. really cool. They were sharing pictures of like fossils that yeah, they go that find. Yeah, incredible, man. And then I yeah. watched some of their, like the, the, the videos content. they put together is incredible. Like I was like, dude, I could sit here and watch, they had a four hour piece of content. And I was like, I could sit here, I could watch this. Right. <laughs> it was good. So uh, then during the Nerf battle, a lot of the girls really stepped up. Mm. So you were talking about Kat as the Tibetan, what is it? The Tibetan. Tibetan Spaniel. Spaniel. Ooh, um, she, she won one of the rounds for us. She like dove across and took them out in their own thing. And then. Uh, and Mariah was like, oh, so Mariah would be uh, she Belgian. Killed, she killed me. What's, Belgian melon walk. Yeah. Yes, she would. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, she definitely played Nerf gun like that. She took me out. I had a welt on my neck. She popped around the corner and just went, bah! and just shot me right in the neck. 
<laughs> was crazy. That's what Tima, the only time I got shot actually was Tima. Yes, Tima. Well, so funny. So Tima is not a content right. creator where she came here as a fan. Um, and there was two different fans. I think they're like patrons of his and everything that I don't know the details of why, but they were like added to the competition. I don't know if it was yeah. like round out numbers or what. She had no idea that what she was supposed to do. And she's like, I think he mentioned something about trivia, which I'm okay with. And she's like, but I'm not okay with this nerf battle. She was like afraid. And uh, I think a little bit afraid of what was going to happen to her seeing how competitive we were getting. Um, but mostly like afraid, I think, that she would not be an asset to the team. But she crushed she it. She was the only person that shot me. Crushed it, yeah. yes. And she and she got me that, that that's a reminder, by the way, how uh, Mariah got you, that she's like, she got the same shot on me, right in the neck. Right in the neck, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, dude, those. She pulled on kill those shot. little mama bear thing came out in there and was like, bah! that was great. <laughs> so yeah, what would she be? She's got short purple hair, super friendly and cute, but yeah, definitely uh, went crazy. During, like the first couple rounds, she was just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know why I'm here. But like basically as soon as she was comfortable with the nerf gun, she was just just owned it. If we went three more rounds, I think it would have been all women standing. I would say a terrier. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Yeah. Some fairly aggressive terrier though. Yeah. Well I'm thinking <laughs> specifically of my aunt's terrier that like rips uh rats to shreds. <laughs> you know, no, me. Like, like I walk <laughs> by and like think it's all fine, but then all of a sudden I'm getting my my ankle ripped open. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good stuff, man. What a what a great weekend, great people. That was a lot of fun. It was. So yeah, that's why I came, and and that was the best part for me. Clinton, Leisha, uh, especially Leisha, did such a great job planning everything, and she just really wanted everyone to have a good time, which everybody absolutely, you know, loved it. Was floored by it. Yeah, it was it was well put together. <clears throat> Every, yeah. Everything went off without even when there was were issues. It was like it was like this is perfect that this is like happening or it was just like it didn't feel like oh that messed it up it didn't anything that like was even slightly off like just like the i don't know the numbers on jeopardy like having to like restart the internet or whatever i think the crew that we have is good it, enough yeah with it ended up being like okay we'll go, yeah the improvisational things <clears throat> Yeah, I think Which Dave, Bob Bledsoe, Dave right? called out Bob Bledsoe, and he's like, he's a stand-up comedian. And then he's like, but Garrett has a great singing voice or something. <laughs> I started leading the national anthem. Yeah. Everyone was all standing up, and I was like, no, no, we're not doing the whole thing. I was ready to do the whole thing. I jumped the mic and jumped in with you. Do you, you know why I quit? The name number one was like, I'm going to forget a, a verse or something. And I'd be like, oh, crap, I don't know the national anthem. That would be embarrassing. <laughs> Like, you know it, but then when you stand up and sing it in the stadium, which I've never, or a gymnasium or whatever, yeah. I've never done before. So I'm like, I'm going to forget this halfway through. I better quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> but yeah, no, that, so that was good the, with the planning and everything. But again, the, the sort of the final thing after all was said and done, we went out to, I think it was Leisha's dad's little campground, plot of land. It was like 15 minutes out into the mountains and had a bonfire. Yeah, which was perfect. You know that that was awesome. Well, and even right before, even right before that, like going just going up to pizza because like I it was great. They had so many volunteers that helped out so well, and like the interns and everything, and, and employees that did such a great job handling it to where they could actually walk away from the away. grand opening, step away because I mean they, they had been going the whole time, and then it was like just an hour into the grand opening thing, and it was like. Oh, we're just going to come sit up here with you guys and have pizza while our grand opening is happening. And yeah. I thought that was great. I was like, oh, sweet. Yeah. I thought that we were all, we all going to be down there just kind of swamped, you know, yeah. for uh-huh. however many hours. And, and they, had, they had it set to where, no, that wasn't the case. That was, yeah. that was cool. Yeah. They said their hellos and then bowed out. That was the pizza place right next door if you yeah. guys are ever in town. But, yeah, I was telling Clint and Leisha, they're like, are you okay? Wait, you know, what did you enjoy the best? And I just was like, Clint, man, I'm just, you know. I'm just proud of you. I think this is really cool. It's kind of like you said, you know, you get that that group, me, you, Dave, Clint, you know, we've done a lot of things over the years and you know what I mean? And so I, I think, you know, like Dave always has that dream of opening a reptile museum in the Mall of America and stuff like that. And it's like, I, I think that's a, a pivotal moment or whatever. You know, for me, it's Retic Fest. Everyone is very supportive of coming to Retic Fest. <clears throat> Except for one guy I know. Oh, come on. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's an annual event. Just give me crap. But um, no, I mean, you know, like, so obviously, like, this is Clint's dream. So it's like, 
yeah, dude, that's a big moment for you. I, I got to be there for that. Yeah. So, especially it, if you're going to ugly cry like that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a similar thing, like, when you were talking about, like, Dave, you were, how you're, like, kind of, like, at the breaking point of, like, you know, everything you could possibly handle. I mean, Dave, Dave was at a similar spot, you know? Really, and, and really. Is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you mean just because he's like been so busy? With yeah, the so house busy in the reason. house, and yeah. yeah, and and then I also am actually right at the spot where I think I'm. I'm right. That thing was like, I might like. I think I'm right where I, I can't possibly handle anything else. Right. And it, it's funny that the three of us are there, and then coming here, and then Clint was also there, but he, but he like broke into that point where it's like he just breaking yeah. into the the. <sighs> and and that was the moment at the the bonfire it was kind of he's like what's the best moment and i was almost like this one <laughs> right here getting to watch you like bust through that glass ceiling or whatever you want to call yeah. it you know what i mean and uh and just being like ah you know it's not clint's reptile is open after years of going through the pandemic thing and yeah all that kind of stuff and yeah good times good times what a great weekend it was awesome to see everybody uh really appreciate all of those of you guys that came up and said hello and you know what they've learned ab about our channel or there's so many people that love the super dwarves that clint has so i've never met them they're not a customer or or you know i don't even think some of them watch my youtube channel or anything but they've just learned about animals or about super dwarves from the animals themselves and they knew they came from me so that was really cool you know just to see the animals doing their thing and i every time i come to these things um, like with, with Animal Con or uh, other things, I just kind of, there's a bunch of other creators, like really large creators, much larger than, you know, my channel. And I, I'm just like, well, I'm just going to come see my friends and hang out. And there'll be a lot of other people here from the public to see their favorite channels that are huge and they're willing to travel to go see them and stuff. And like, right. and then I'll just kind of watch. Yeah. <laughs> and then people, then people will come up and be like, man, I've watched all your videos. And I'm just like, oh, there's a pe somebody here that likes me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Well, I'll tell you, um, one person that was has been really cool to watch, and I don't get to hang out with him nearly enough because he's on the other side of the country, but that is Bob Bledsoe, Green Room Pythons. Mm. So he bought a snake from me years ago, and he was just starting his YouTube channel, you know? And I remember I was, like, looking him up on IMDb because he's like, oh, I'm an actor, you know? You might have seen me in this. And I'm like, uh uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. <laughs> but uh, again, don't really understand too many pop culture references or anything. But I, you know, it was cool. I, I got to know him. Really like he's a great guy. Um, so really enjoyed selling him snakes, <laughs> I guess. And, and, and uh, he, does a, he does a good job. Like his, his um, idea of, well, it shows, I think, that he has that foot in the, the comedy and, and acting world and he, like his idea for production watching him work yes. was fun to see that like his watch his brain like he's got this idea he has whole like script script written out and like yeah. the, the production level of it and like he's mm -hmm. got this character that he plays and then yeah he does he does he steps into different so I, yeah i can congratulate him on that what is it kent kent that his yeah. other right so like his brother or whatever so if you guys uh are somehow listening to this and not following green room pythons you'll have to go watch his his video from from the clint's reptiles yeah weekend, i'm looking forward to it's watching gonna that. be good yeah so anyway it was really cool because he was just starting his channel and everything and now like when we were in that gymnasium and there's however many people were watching i don't know 100 150 people or something like that and they're like green room pythons and everyone's like yeah and i was like dang you know we were joking around because <clears throat> we each had that one minute clip so if you guys want to see everyone that's there, go on Clint's Reptiles thing. They, they put a on the community, community post. Yeah. And each of us had to make a knockoff, a spinoff video of what's, you know, best pet reptile and try to convince you of the best pet. We got to pick anything in the room, right? So um, anyways, his, he, uh, he had like water monitor. Yeah, Asian water monitor. Definitely not the best pet reptile no. for most people. <laughs> but it but lands, landslide victory in the landslide. So I, you know, and I was conspires like I think it's because the rest of us uploaded to YouTube and he did to Instagram. And the algorithm must have crushed us and all this stuff. And mm -hmm. then you see all those people walk in, which was obviously just a sampling of who watched his channel. And I was like, no, no, Bob's a big deal. Like it has nothing to do with Instagram or anything like that. Like he legitimately crushed us. Like he's doing really good. Yeah. There, so there were people. Um, this should no. This will be out after that happens. There, there were people like from his um, Discord server and like Patreon crew that approached me at Tinley that they were putting together something 
No, there's no way. I'm, I'm, I'm just making sure because they asked me to make sure I don't I know what it. you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, the, so that he has people like putting things together for him that he didn't ask them to put together for him. It's yeah. Like, yeah. So there's pe people he's, are. He's got a few. People really are supporting cool cats in his. No doubt about it. No, I'm like I said, I think he 100 percent deserves it. His yeah. content is great, and it's been very cool to see him rise from just starting his channel. He's literally just starting his channel when he bought his first Superdorf. Right, and I didn't know him from anybody, and then uh, you know, and then I've run into him at shows and things like that, and he's called me a couple times. He's worked on a couple of Superdorf projects he wanted info on and stuff, so we've stayed in touch over the years. Um, but yeah, watching him kind of grow into himself in the reptile community, and it's so cool to see. Cause he's a very different like person than I am. Yeah, but we have that same passion and love for the animals. So it's so cool when somebody is so different from you and you still are able to be accepting of them in your space. If you can do that, there's some really cool friendships to be had. There's a lot to be learned. Like you're saying, even production process and stuff like that, you know, just a, just a good time. I think that was it. I think, I think that's the summary of, uh, you know, this weekend for those guys that didn't, that and this is like really good people, you know, and you got to celebrate the moments when good people do well. Yeah. Never happens enough. You know yeah, no, I, mean? I, I was I was feeling that specifically, <clears throat> like sitting. I was just like, hey, which also made made sense to me because I mean, I feel like Clint also has high standards. Oh yeah, hundred percent for sure. So <clears throat> he's like, yeah, it was, it was good. He he cares a lot too. It's always funny. He always makes a point like. <clears throat> one of the things he said to me, it, it, it's the small moments that show you like what people think about and care about when they're not, you know, recording a, a video or something. Right. So I, I talked to his parents or something and, and I think some kids came up and I, I don't honestly even remember the situation, but I interacted with some kids that were there at the reptile room and I, I was trying to meet his dad, but I was like, Oh yeah, give me a second here. I'm going to hang with these kids for a minute. And I don't remember if I gave him a sticker or whatever I did. I don't remember. But Clint, like Clint's dad told him that. And he's like, Hey, you know, my dad said, you know, you like, you were super cool with the kids, you know? And you like stopped and got down on your knees and like took some time from him and stuff. And he's like, you really impressed my dad. My dad thinks you're a really good guy now. Like, and I'm like, I don't even know why he's telling me this or whatever, but those little moments where it's like, Hey, I just want to pull you aside and say, Hey, what you did for those kids was really cool. And you're like, okay. Well, you, I mean, you can see his priorities in life are, caring about i mean that's what the whole cleanse reptile room thing is about right let's like let's show the kids a good time it's not about look at me youtube celebrity or anything like that it's if if i can get you in the door i'm not afraid to use my youtube celebrity but once you're there i want you to be amazed by these animals and feel special you know um having that connection with them and then with other people and kind of encourage a lot of the things that you know, I, I know like when I was growing up, there wasn't a lot of people around to encourage such behavior, <laughs> you know, and I think it's still that way today, even though the reptile industry is more mainstream. And I think if you are growing up that reptile life, you know, you're, you're probably still feeling like a bit of an outsider, you know, to regular society. So it's cool to see Clint, like the lady from City Hall was like, we are so proud of Clint and so happy for this day who came down for the ribbon cutting and all that. So he's definitely breaking barriers into the, you know, yeah. mainstream world. Yeah, that's true. However yeah. people do that, it's always good for the industry. Yeah. You know what I mean? No doubt. So, yeah. Hmm. Well, you ready to go catch up with the laid laws? Let's go. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you next time. Oh, yeah, we're